it's time to join the Bleatnik hype train as Bleatnik, my one true favourite cutest monster, is arriving tomorrow. And with Amber Island Wave coming along very soon too, I say it's about time for us to look into what we can expect. Our first point of conversation has to be the next Amber Island Wave. We've been waiting almost two months for this new wave, so it's going to be quite a big deal when this does land on Amber Island. Going by the countdown over on Amber Island, the next wave will be arriving this Thursday, straight after Bleatnik's release tomorrow. Inside of Amber Island's next wave, which is going to be wave eight, it has been revealed that there's going to be some changes. So from now on, we are actually going to be getting one brand new monster and one new rare every single wave. That is instead of the three monsters that we've been getting every single wave, and that's going to actually go down now until the conclusion of Amber Island. For each wave, we're going to be getting either Tring, Bicinerus, Incisor, Dromedary, the three quints, or the potential new hex, which I am only listing because I really want to see it. That has actually been deconfirmed, so make sure to go watch my video on that. But going from the original take on having three monsters, this is actually quite a big change, as we're seeing now only one new monster come along. And going by how Amber Island is quite a robust island, and therefore monsters don't quite contribute quite as much on this island, seeing as though there's so many monsters on this island, it is going to be quite interesting to see how they do go about this. Now I'm in big favour towards this change, I was actually quite worried about the release of all of these quints that we're going to be getting and seeing them all come out all at once almost. If three monsters were going to come all at once, it's been a really nice gradual addition that we've been seeing with the island where we've been seeing a single new monster come every single time from Dawn of Fire. So seeing this change come along, I think it's a much needed one to even things out and make them feel a little more special as otherwise they'd all be coming all at once and it'd be absolutely insane, especially with them quint monsters that we're going to be seeing inside of of Dawn of Fire as well. I have no doubt that they're going to need some more development time to get those into Dawn of Fire, and obviously they do have to come around the same time, as otherwise it would take away from the specialness of Dawn of Fire and what makes it the game in the first place. So I do understand the changes that have been made here. Now, Mythical Island has only just come, and seeing as though it's only just come, Tring is most likely to be our next monster out of the ones that we've just mentioned here. This is our final non-new monster. This is the one that I can't really see coming later. Once they start releasing these brand new monsters, it feels like almost they're going to be heading towards the conclusion of this island, aren't they? Which is actually going to take place next year now. And with this being a non-new monster as well, and as getting a Bleatnik tomorrow, it feels like they can get away with releasing Tring this time. And I know that does kind of suck, as we have been waiting the longest for this Amber Island wave, and we're only getting one new monster and everything. But I think Tring coming now makes the most sense. For Tring, it's obviously going to be a very minor addition. The best case scenario to me is a slightly smoother verse transition arising out of Tring. That's the very best case scenario and the very best place as well in turn with that would be for Tring, I do think, to play inside of the beginning of the song or inside of Wallaby's verse. It can play absolutely anywhere inside of the song. All of the verses need some smoothing in, we'll use that word, but I think I think going at the end of the beginning section and also Wallaby's verse is definitely the most needed change as I think those are the ones that really stick out to me as being the most unsmooth at the moment. So getting Tring there would be the best place for Tring to go, I do believe. Tring sound across the islands is a very same as I'm sure all of you guys are aware. If you go to Dawn of Fire and then you go to Firehaven, the exact same kind of sound. So it's going to be interesting as well. See how they do differentiate from a Firehaven or even if they do differentiate at all. Following on from Tring as well, we do have the additional rare that's going to be arriving inside of Wave 8. This is very likely to be rare Snizer. Now, if I had any say in what's going to come inside of Tring's Wave, I would change it so that a different rare came along, perhaps a brand new one, to make this wave seem a little bit more special, as I don't think Tring is going to contribute a lot and seen as though we've been waiting for this Amber Island Wave for so long, it would be really Really cool to potentially get our very first rare fire monster from Dawn of Fire, but that is not gonna happen, and I know we're gonna be expecting Rare Snizer to come along. So therefore, Tring and Rare Snizer will be the ones inside of Wave 8, I would predict. And just overall, I think it's important for us to lower our expectations for this monster, as it's very unlikely to do anything other than to add one note, which isn't what Amber Island needs right now, as there's lots that this song needs, and it feels 
feels a little blank at the moment. So it'll be exciting to see what does come after Tring, but in the meantime, we'll take Tring up while we have his wonderful Bleatnik come along. With Bleatnik, we went over last time how I'm kind of avoiding the bios, so I'm not getting too spoiled by these monsters, but Prince Music has left a comment here and they've put in the reveal, they put out, they said something about Bleatnik gurgling. And going by this, I think it absolutely matches its design perfectly that Bleatnik would gurgle. If you look at its mouth, it's a very standout piece behind this design, and therefore, judging by the tongue also situating inside of this monster, perhaps this tongue could also arise as it gurgles and makes this noise. So, with this comment now, we'll have a vocal demonstration. I would presume that Bleatnik will make a sound like <coughs> something like that. Obviously, the notes are there. <laughs> We'll make a sound like that, won't it? Another wonderful commenter, awesome Waluigi man, has said that they are considering Bleatnik to have an easygoing sound like we went over last time, very soft and light, but also for it to perhaps be similar to Yelma and Yostridge, going by its goat-like appearance. And going back to this comment, I'm not exactly sure whether it would go out of its way, Bleatnik, to be this powerful monster, quite like to what Yostridge would. Obviously, that would be really cool if it did, but we have all of these different different personalities on this island and all of the vocalists I'm sure are going to take on different roles on this island and just with this comment it got me thinking the big question here really is will Bleatnik add on to this grand attack that Yostridge is taking on on this island and whether it'll have that really big vocal backing that Yostridge does if it does come along and have that hugeness that Yostridge carries about with it on this island there is lots of possibilities for what that jives section as we went over last time, which is quite likely to be where Bleatnik does play, would sound like. We also went over how it could equally likely be in Ujube and Yostridge's second track, and just the same there, seeing what it could do with Yostridge is quite an interesting idea. Make sure to let me know down below what you think about Amber Island with 8, and whether you are excited for the one true Bleatnik. <laughs> who's gonna be absolutely so thrilling to check out tomorrow and I'm very excited as I'm sure all of you guys know. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed guys and subscribe down below too. Tomorrow is Bleats Day, our day for Bleatnik. So make sure to be ready for the Bleats of the Knicks. It's like, <laughs> we're checking it out tomorrow. See you guys later though for now. Bye guys. Bleats Nick, I can't wait for you. I can't wait. No, seriously, I can't wait for bleeding. <laughs> Nick, I love you.